In this video, I interview Thomas Ripens at MADE in Antwerp, Belgium. They're a digital innovation agency, and they just adopted Holacracy, and they're using Asana to do their tactical meetings. If you're looking at using Asana for GTD or to improve team communications, and you want to also incorporate Holacracy or some of the principles, this is a great video to watch. Thomas is the digital product lead there, and he's also an Asana certified pro. And in this video, we're going to talk about uh, time allocation and budget allocation across circles and how Holacracy has helped them do that more effectively. We're also going to talk about daily workflow and team communication uh, and using custom fields in Asana to support roles and assignment and get visibility on projects, not just in a circle or in a tactical meeting, but across circles. Um, we're also going to talk about some of the challenges and benefits and a few other topics. Thomas is a great communicator, uh, really lovely to talk to him. So without further ado, Thomas Ripens. So my name is Thomas. I work for um, Made Design Innovation, which is an innovation agency in Antwerp, Belgium. We mainly work for uh, Belgian companies right now, starting from entrepreneurs who have a great idea to, uh, to SMEs or even yeah, also bigger companies, uh, where we try to um, yeah, integrate innovation in their daily work, but also in their products and in their services. So we try to come up with um, services or products that are or not in the market yet, or not, or not in the right way, and try to optimize them to uh, to optimize the companies themselves. There's also somewhat some digital transformation is also part of that. It's a bit of a buzzword, but okay. And uh, myself, I'm the I'm the digital team lead, so I mainly pull all the digital uh, trajectories for uh, for our clients. Um, but with Holacracy, of course, there's also uh, I have some other roles within the company as well, or more operational. Um, and also, one of the things uh, that do concern me are the, the tools we're using, or let's let's just say it's it's a productivity thing. I'm a, I'm a GTD guy. I like to get things done. I like to make it clear for everyone who's doing what against what time and so on. So that's how I got into Asana. Let's say three years ago. Oh wow. Um, and that's how I, yeah, I've implemented it in my previous company where we were around 15, 16. And then I came into MADE, already um, considered Asana a really powerful tool. And then also we did the implementation for, uh, for MADE. So we're now all 22 of us are running onto Asana for our daily task management. Um, and with the switch to Holacracy, it was interesting to see and how can we, how can we pick this up? I've also, uh, visited Springest in uh, in uh, Amsterdam. I'm not sure if you've mm -hmm. heard of those. Yep. Um, visited them, also had, we followed their governance and their tactical meetings to see, because I know they're also working with uh, Asana, uh, to see, okay, how can we translate this to our system and how can we, uh, can we do it? It was like an eye-opener also to see, or because Hans in the beginning got us into Glassfrog, which, which sure was fine to have an introduction part of, uh, of uh, Alacracy. But at a certain point, when you get these actionables out of a meeting or, or even governance items, it's, um, they need to be picked up. And when they're not in our tool where people pick things up, then they're not really actionable enough. Um, so that, that's a bit the reason why we, uh, why we chose to, to, to switch and to flip it up and then uh, and see from there how we can optimize the, that flow. And um, that, that's also the reason why Asana is now the, the, main, the main point where uh, we're doing our tacticals. I do have to say we're not having a solid solution yet for Glassfrog uh, after your governance meetings because um, what Springist does is they have this API thing running with Asana where they also manage their roles um, within Asana and then, it, and then it translates to this circular view, uh, which is also an app they built themselves. They do have developers, we, we do not. Um, so we're now relying for governance still on Glassfrog and once a role changes or a new role is created that we manually change that into Asana uh, as well. But we found our way in, uh, in doing tacticals and even with, with this team starting in all accuracy, you already feel like there's a lot of value into clicking this into your task management tool because a meeting all of a sudden gets like extremely actionable. Of course, the way all accuracy looks at meetings is already like actionable, but if you click it into people's habits, which is Asana and Mate, then, then that really works, really works out really well. Um, so yeah, that, that's a bit that's a bit my story. I used to be I used to be a web developer in the in the early days. So I have my technical background, designer as a as a formation, and now coaching and and uh, and being a project lead in in these uh, in these yeah, digital trajectories. So that's a bit where uh, where I'm. That's super cool. So it sounds like you kind of did something kind of like what I did. Like you were technical and then you moved into more of the coaching team leadership kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. 
that's yeah. great. And that's, I've always found that to be a hard, like, it was really hard. F- Previously, it was really hard for me to make that transition because when you're technical, it's like, it's so valuable to be able to like write code and, and make products that all anyone wants you to do is write code and make products. So I think that making that cutover is pretty tricky. True, but I, let's say I made the switch at a certain point, I realized I was never gonna be like the like crazy good developer. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, already, I already had some studies uh, around communications before. And then the switch to being a digital project manager was kind of kind of logical to me. Uh, so I made the switch from being a developer, knowing the, knowing the code to doing the projects, also knowing the consequences of specific choices for code. Um, so that made sense in a way. And at the time in my in my company, there was uh, it was an opening for that. Yeah, and then after that, it's uh, managing the the funnel, the sales, the and those things. And then yeah, next up is team lead. <laughs> wow, and you like and you like it more than more than uh, development work. Yeah, but I have to say that the development work we did at the time was really more of an advertising kind of thing. Uh, while yeah. what we're doing now is really digital products, which is the products that are, that are being used. It's not like a one-time advertising thing, and then it disappears after three months. This is really, it's another kind of design and another kind of development. But well, what the difference is, is even though uh, we're not doing development in-house at MADE because we are kind of agnostic, let's say, um, we, well, we always start our innovation challenge actually from that challenge and not from the technical av- availabilities we have internally. Let's say that we, I would have four uh, native, native web, um, app developers, for example, by my side. Then I would turn every innovation challenge into something that could make these guys billable, which is not right. the way we have to look at innovation. So right now, it's let's at a certain point say this has to be a progressive web app. And then we turn to external partners who we have good relationships with and then they build exactly what is needed to make sure that it's a success. That's a, that's a bit how we roll now. Yeah, I, I wonder if there's something in Holacracy where it's it's kind of the same thing. It's like when you know when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Like mm-hmm. if if there's any sort of I haven't experienced this because Holacracy I think works really well for like a lot of things, but this idea of um, people kind of get tunnel. I, I wonder do people kind of get tunnel vision around um, using the holacracy constructs to like describe everything and not, not resorting to like other, other organizational frameworks or things like that. Yeah. Once like we're now really pushing holacracy and making sure that people think that way and that they have to think from, uh, from the role. I think for a lot of people who are not the visionary type, it's difficult to look broader than just holacracy. So uh, but we're still in the transition phase. People are, really positive for now and they're really open to uh, to uh, to dive in but it's they're in no way looking for than what holacracy is uh, is bringing them right now we'll see in like a year where we're where we are at um, but it's really um, like the first the first things that we really got going with holacracy is um, yeah for example marketing from we're an agency so we sell ours let's say it's a consultancy based thing sure. um, so for, for example, what's difficult for an agency is our own marketing. Uh, let's say we want to release a new website. We want to up our social media, for example. How are we going to do that when people are not paid to do it? Like we need, now we have social media roles within a marketing circle, um, which, uh, for example, a designer of mine is in, is in a role of social media. He, he has this uh, ambition to do that and he's doing a good job at it. He, he wouldn't have done it because other projects will always have the upper hands until... Um, or in, contr- in contrary to the to the social media, um, so with whole accuracy that this gives him his accountability. So he, he needs to do these posts to make sure that our marketing circle is happy with that progress as well. And for example, now our new website, which is coming live somewhere next month, is uh, has been a tedious work, but we finally got there because we have our tacticals. We were able to align. We, had, we were able to to adjust the planning where needed and so on. Also, like the, the content check you have to do with the founders, or is that the story we want to tell? Is it related to the vision we have with Nate? Like that entire trajectory would not have been possible without Holacracy because clients always get the upper hand um, above those kinds of things. So that's um, so we're really that's interesting. So let me let me challenge you on that. So I know that um, there's the the duty of prioritization, right? So everyone is supposed to prioritize their work according to what's most what they think is most important. How is it different when you have Holacracy at play versus like he's, wouldn't he still be prioritizing client work over 
marketing work? No, because um, one of the founders is, uh, let's say, more of the financial type, while the other one is more the creative type. So um, our other founder uh, made these internal retainers, put them in, inside the, uh, the business plan as well. Like, for example, for uh, our, our business year ends somewhere in July, which is indeed a bit off, but it's, it's the way it is. So uh, in July, when we were already in holacracy, he already kept in mind, okay, we're going to have this marketing circle. It, wouldn't, it will need internal budget because we will need to be able to, to calculate in a way well, how big are our investments in from our internal roles next to our external, um, external projects. Um, so we now have this retainer and, and, and we have software that, that lets us track our hours and our time. So uh, we're able to track that from that retainer so we know at every given point how far we in the retainer. And that also gives people who have a specific role the, the urge to say, okay, even though it's an internal thing, it's also a budget, which has been foreseen in the budget plan. While previously we didn't have that, and we would just assume that someone who has interest in social media would pick it up. But if at a certain point a client picks, um, takes it over, like it, it's, it, it, he has something urgent, then you immediately see three or four weeks, no more social media posts. I'm gonna take off the sound. Uh, three or four weeks, no more social media posts, simply because, yeah, he doesn't have the time for it, but not, right now he has that accountability, so it's been written down, and to him that's a lot more clear that these things are expected from him. Also, the fact that now every month or week, depending on how we set the metrics, he has to um, report what he's done, so that, that's, a com that's completely different than what it was before. That's great. That, that's, and then, okay, and so just so, just so I'm clear, so you're, you've kind of got like a I don't want to say it's an app necessarily, but you've got, um, you've got resource allocation, you've got money allocated at the circle level from the broader circle that says, look, this is important. We've got this much budget, track the hours. Exactly. Um, that's cool. Um, Zappos did something very similar. They've got a thing called market-based dynamics, MBD, mm -hmm. and they're a huge company, right? And the, every circle in Zappos now has a profit and loss statement, like a P&L. And they actually have to buy services from each other internally, um, which is like way, way, way very elaborate. Um, but it's a similar kind of thing. And, and when I was talking to the market-based dynamics guys, they said that they could not have done MBD without first doing Holacracy. Because they yeah, needed well, that. We did the same thing. Because, um, well, just looking at, um, in, as I said, in it, we have this software which, which allows us to plan in people and people have to confirm how many hours they've worked on a project and that's, that's how we time them, um, which works fine. It's, it's something that all other agencies uh, are doing as well. But there's one, there's one thing and that's, that's a difficult one. Being billable, let's say, to, to clients is something that's weighing on a team. Like a designer, he, he needs to be able to focus on the creative part and not about the fact, am I billable or not? So that, that's a discussion we were having internally as well. Because let, let's just say that, again, the social media example, let's just say he's working on a client, he's billable, and he has that specific rate he has to get. Let's just say a designer has to be 65% billable. But I'm now working on social media, which feels to him less worth because it's not billable. And he's getting, and he's getting asked for that as well. Let's, let's just say, you know, like kind of direct. But right now, his billability has to be up and has to be 85% because even internal budget are seen as actual budgets um, that we as that we need made based on on circles. Um, so for him now, he only has to worry about the fact: am I billable eighty five percent? But billable is also internal billable. That's great. Yeah, so that, that's a bit how we're doing it now. And even for a team of 20, 22 people, you, um, you, you're using this sort of internal um, internal billable system. Yeah, yeah, that's because great. because we do feel indeed. Antwerp is a vibrant city as well. Uh, it has a lot of agencies like, like we have, so we know that our marketing is important. We've let it down for a couple of two, two three years, but immediately now when you, when you see these, uh, when the effort is going in, you already see these results coming in, and, uh, and that's good to see that, that, that it actually works. There's another circle that we, uh, that we made, Smooth Operations, it's called. It's mainly about optimizing our processes, making sure that we're doing a kickoff with a client the same way each and every time that we don't have to reinvent it every time, every time. So also there, for example, I'm, I'm also there, uh, I'm, I'm active in that, in that circle. We also have a lot of things going, going on there, which, yeah, you know how it goes. You, uh, can you think about your processes? Yeah, sure. I can, if I have the time, but right now I have the time because I have the budget. So there's always that thin line, of course, like 
clients bringing the money. So we need to make sure that there's a, there's a good balance between it. But it, it, I do feel it gives power to people to, um, to actually get things done that are within their interest, but also next to their regular uh, job. Maybe like the last example, at a certain point at the beginning of when we started the leprosy in the general circle, and because I'm a lead link from the digital circle, I brought up the, I brought in the governance meeting, I, I brought up the, uh, well, I'm not sure if it was me or someone else because I'm not sure from what role I brought it up, but at a certain point, someone brought up um, the role of handyman um which was then frowned upon by by founders like why on, on earth would we need a need a handyman but because we're within innovation we we have a digital team but we also have a, a industrial product design team who actually make physical products so most of these uh, these guys are kind of handy so if a light is broken or uh, something is breaking off we're not immediately calling for this uh, handyman externally but these guys love to fix these things but the same thing we used to expect this from these guys while they were doing their job and then take off one hour to, to fix the, all of these kinds of things. So I just said, hey, why don't we just make this a role and make sure that these people feel when they're getting these requests shown at them, like, can you fix the, can you fix the door? Can you fix the window? Which they love doing. Why don't we just give them accountabilities for it so that they can push back other people saying, hey, yeah, I can do your question as well, but I have this handyman thing I have to do as well. And that's great. yeah, so that that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's working. Cool. Um, and are you, are you just using like some fairly standard, uh, software for the, for the time tracking? Like is the, is marketing like just like another project in your time tracker or are you using specialized software? We used to, um, we used to work on, uh, on harvest, like a lot mm -hmm. of other industries, I think in America as well. Sure. Uh, also together with forecast to be able to do our planning, but we felt like reporting is, uh, is kind of limited. Indeed, it's kind of it's not enough. Uh, so then we decided to uh, to look up broader, and there are like two or three big, big bigger startups uh, in Belgium who have made their own software. Like there's Team Leader, for example, which, which is one which we looked at. But then we uh, decided to go with Yadera, which is uh, Y A D E R A. It's also Belgian uh, Belgian startup, but they were just bought by Team Leader like a month ago because they're doing a good job. And let's say that. On UX level, they still have their challenges, like to use the to use the tool. Uh, you, there's still things to need to be improved. But if you look at the level of reporting you can get out of it, it's immense. Cool. It's uh, on a team level, it's crazy. And we're doing our orders in there, we're doing our projects in there, we're doing our planning in there. Even invoicing is connected to the actual invoicing system. So also for the office manager, it's it's an easy thing. Um, and yeah, that works. Uh, also, the retainer part is in there. So everything that's financial. Nice. I can't wait to see Asana. I think I have one more question for you about um, prioritization. Mm -hmm. How um, are you using, actually, this, this actually is an Asana question, maybe. Are you using Asana to do prioritization or do people just do that in their head? No. Oh, um, um, for example, I know the GTD part quite well. I'm just still figuring out how... Um, I want to I wanna put it in my Asana as well because I have an Asana for home and I have an Asana for work. Um, but GDD kind of implies that you take all of your inboxes together and put it in one environment. So I'm still trying to juggle out how I want to do that. Um, but I do indeed, and, and let's say that I'm training these people internally with Asana as well. Uh, most of them already have this my tasks kind of flow and they divide that into high priority, medium priority, and so on. And, and, and that's uh, that's definitely the case i'm prioritizing and that's depending on what am i doing today and then even to the, the today is um is shifted a bit uh into high medium and low and then everything that that's that's later on has a, has a specific date it really has to be date on the date level uh because otherwise the sound doesn't work if you if you're not doing it automatically um so yeah that's that's definitely uh the way i like to look at, uh, at it as well cool Thanks. Um, yeah, would you like to show me how you got, you're kind of doing things in, in Asana or did you yes. have an idea of how, of how that might go? And we can blur out um, anything that, that turns out to be um, confidential. If, if, this goes, if, if this goes online, we'll just blur stuff out. So don't, don't worry about that. Yeah, that would be good um, because it's indeed my professional Asana that I want to show you. So uh, uh, I'm not really sure what I have to blur out because the things on the left side in the Maybe some tasks, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll discuss that later on uh, to see if there's something in. 
because I'm not sure. I, I didn't really prep. I didn't really prep this. So, um, that's that's totally fine, and we can just we can cut it up, or we can, yeah. <clears throat> nothing nothing's gonna go online without getting your permission. Okay, perfect. All right. So great. Uh, let me share my screen. So, um, are you kind of familiar with Asana already, or? Yeah, um, I've been using Asana for a few years. I've used it on software projects as a bug tracker and as a product kind of prioritization tool. Mm -hmm. um, some of the people at Holacracy One use it for their personal system. Some people think it's way too flex flexible and not structured enough and prefer something like OmniFocus. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. very, yeah, so I'm familiar with it at a high level, but just take, take me through it kind of like how you would someone new. Okay, so basically you have, um, you have the sidebar, you have the, the header bar, let's say, and you have the central pane where you have, yeah, of course, different things to do. I'll, I'll jump into that later on, but I think what I want to start off with is the, is the my tasks because that's the, the place where you, uh, where you get in your, let's say your tickets or your tasks from other people who are expecting things from you. Um, now the, the thing is that with Asana, it's important or what they want to, um, what they want to get done is that everyone in the company knows who's doing what at what time or against what, at what time um, and that's what Asana is giving to me in my role as a team lead uh, we, we have the premium version so um, we do not have portfolios but we do have the, the custom fields for example um, now what and the thing is it'll get clear sorry and you, you, you really you really need those custom fields to do anything structured right in my, opinion, in my opinion you do because if you use the custom fields it's not only visual but you're also able to, uh, to uh, do an advanced search on them um, so let's say that I want to find all the high priority tasks from everything that, that I've been, that I've touched in Asana. I can do an advanced search on priority high, for example, which is not something you're able to do when you have the free version. Right. Um, so yeah, that, that's, indeed, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, correct. So, but it'll, it'll be clear how in, while I'm talking, how these things um, are getting into my inbox, but it's important for, for you to know as well that you get these, you get these tasks pointed at you. Then you have these, um, these recently assigned where all of these tasks just pop in, but they're not really ad uh, addressed to, uh, to a specific or to my own GTD, let's say. And that's why you have today upcoming and later, if I close this one, you'll see these are the three sections you have. Um, let's, for example, just say that topic scan it, for example, is something I could do today, even though it's due on Wednesday. Um, I could shift this to, uh, to today and put it on high because I think that this is really something I need to get done. But for example, operations, it's, it's not like a good description for a task, but anyway, uh, I put that in low because I think I can get that done as well. Um, but using those timings and putting actual timing, and that's also a rule we have, if you address someone with a task, then make sure that you put in a time on when you expect it yourself, when it has to be done, and then the other one can still define when he wants it to get done. Um, but it, it gives you an idea on, uh, on first, what, what timing does people expect from me? And on the other hand, um, it'll also make Asana automated in a way. Because if I would say, um, let's just go to my upcoming. I have tons of upcoming, and they're all dates in the future. So indeed, whole accuracy practitioners training, for example, or give some feedback to, uh, to someone is, is something that'll uh, pop up in my, in my today's automatically uh, as of tomorrow. So tomorrow morning when I put my, uh, my laptop open, these will have jumped into my low um, section here, which uh, which then again lets me give the option, am I putting it in medium, low or high? And that that kind of structures my day already in what, I'm, what I have to do. Um, and if, if I have some time left, I can still look in what, what is upcoming for me and what can I already shift a bit more further away or even closer by. And, and that gives me for my personal to-dos a good overview. Um, so that's that. For, uh, for my tasks, um, but would you like, as we go, would you like me to ask questions in the moment or should I save them for the end? No, sure. I think it's relevant to, uh, to ask them straight up. Yeah, sure. So, and what, so when those, when those things pop into your low, how do they know to go into low versus medium or high? Is that a setting or do they just go to the bottom of your today list? No, it's indeed um, when the next day you go looking for them, they always pop in, pop in the, the lowest points of today, which in my case is a section which is which is low. If I would delete these sections, then the newest it would just be at the at the bottom. So it's just at the bottom. Okay. 
Um, but indeed, it's a, but I think it's a, it's a good fit because indeed they could be low and it's up to me to define if it's higher up in the, in the, in the ranking. Yeah. Great. All right. Now the, the thing where to me, it all gets together and this is also where most of the teams are struggling in my opinion is the inbox because the inbox is telling you what people are telling you. For example, this is already Hans who gave us a workshop yesterday about some uh, facilitator roles and so on. And, um, once you're mentioned in a task or you have a task that has been assigned to you or uh, you're part of a specific uh, team or circle and there has been a conversation in it, then um, then it will pop up here. And if you don't check your inbox the way you check your email inbox once in a while, you will not see these kinds of notifications. You will not be on point of your task. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so that's a bit why inbox is really important. That's also something I really want to drill in the team as well. And most of them are doing a good job because if I make a conversation or a comment on a task which is related to an external project, then I want people to react on that and to respond to that, to that, so that, that it can be like a really, uh, that we can collaborate on that task. And it's not just me sending out things to you and you have to do it. It's, uh, it's really here also we're doing a lot of communication. I do, we do have Slack as a company, but Slack to us is more like the, the quick communication. Hey, are you in? Hey, can we sit together? These kind of questions. While everything that's, Product of project related is something that we uh, that we do inside uh, our Asana task. Um, so if you, if you fly through this, um, someone who gave me a task, someone who commented on something, um, Kathleen coming back to me saying, "Hey, I completed this. I already did a brain dump. Um, let me know if uh, if there's something more needed." Or Hans, who did a conversation in the general mate circle, uh, telling telling us about the things he's done yesterday and sharing some files as well. Um, so that's cool. Um, if for example, I've read this and I don't have to do anything with it right now. I can archive it. Uh, so it, it brings my um, it brings my internal inbox practically to zero. It's also where uh, it's also GTD thing, of course, to keep inboxes as low as possible. Um, like for example, my email. I used to work in a company where I got about 150, 200 emails a day, um, which creates this habit of opening your email every two minutes. And at the end of the day, you weren't able to work. You just read your email and try to. To click them all together and see how can I uh, how can I get these things done. Um, right now we're already we're, we have this um, we have this rule in made where we do not send internal mails to each other not not on a project level base not when there's a tr when we're throwing a party and want to invite everyone everything is going within a sign and I'll just show you in uh, in the teams how we uh, how we do that. And how is how is that rule documented? Is that a is that a holacracy governance thing or something outside? Um, a good question. Um, I'm not sure if it's in Holacracy, but it should be in. Uh, we also have Notion, uh, this one on the left bottom side, which is, um, let's say that it's, it's the way we um, push actual official uh, communication towards everyone. It's not, a, it's not a working tool. It's, let's just say that if we create a process, for example, um, to communicate with each other, then the project will be in Asana while we're doing it. And once the actual document has been written and, and has to be shared with everyone, then it is part of this story. So everyone who's also new to me can come in and then look at these uh, things. Like for example, Holacracy, we, we've written out how we want to, how you want to go about Holacracy, how we want to have people on board it and, and, and so on. And there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, constitution is in there and so on. You said that's um, in a uh, notion. It's a notion. Yeah. Okay, and I see that Notion does tasks and projects, but you don't use it for that. You just use it for kind of like a company. It's, a, it's more of a documentation, like you have um, Confluence uh, next to, uh, um, help me out. Um, I know, so it's like an intranet. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit that, but it's a modern way of looking at it. Indeed. Okay. But, uh, exactly. Um, so when you um, would look at these things, I... Um, you have teams in Asana and teams contains projects and projects contain tasks. Um, so it's, it's good to look at these things. So uh, for example, these are the, I'm, I'm also administrator of, uh, of our Asana. So I have access to some more circles than other people, but I mainly am also in, in most of the circles at the moment. So we have the general made circle, we have a digital sub circle, a marketing sub circle, there's management, there's newbie circle products, smooth operations sub circle and strategy sub circle. That's also it, what you can see here. This is a bit the structure that we're, that we're having right now and that correlates. Um, what we do, for example, have as, a, as an actual accountability 
Um, right now, every circle has the accountability um, to update Asana roles, which correlate to the roles we have within um, ClassFrog. Um, this is something that came up in, uh, in governance because otherwise we wouldn't be able to keep up with govern uh, sorry holacracy within Asana. Um, are, those, are those just at the? Is that accountability just at the team level? That is, create make sure the circles are in there, or do you have all of the roles in Asana also? We have all the roles in Asana as well. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. But um, I have to say, I'm looking to uh, to automate that. It's Asana has open APIs. I just need to find a way to. Uh, to click it in just the way Springist kind of did it because then you have one source of truth and that makes more sense. Um, this is a good way around just for now. Um, but I'll give you an example on, on how they're in there. So for example, this is the, the made circle where we do our GCC tacticals. Uh, I'm also gonna show you that we do projects uh, outside our tactical framework of our meeting and, and why we're doing it that way. If you look at the digital sub circle, it's built up in the same way. We have a tactical, but we also have a digital, a digital board, a uh, projects board. Uh, for specific reasons um, and if you look at all the other circles they will have the same thing you see um, there's one thing you don't see that's governance because we decided to keep that in Glassrock for now um, because it's it's easier to create those roles there and to uh, add accountabilities to it but for example if I'm uh, I'll quickly take you through how we um, how we do a tactical meeting I'm not saying our, our hell accuracy is perfect so uh, if you would have uh, remarks on that, feel free to, uh, to jump in. Um, so for example, uh, what you're seeing is you have a task name, you have an assignee, a due date, when it has to be uh, discussed, and we also have sub-circles connected to that. So when we do our check-in, as you typically would do, is where am I, what's distracting me, where am I going? Everyone checks in as a 10, 10 second thing uh, where they, where they uh, do the typical holacracy check-in. And then we move on to the uh, to the checklist, and then we have a quite the extensive checklist. I think we need to uh, take it down a bit, but you have to know because this is the the GCC, the General Made Circle. Um, of course, there are a lot of people in there. Let's say um, if we, if you look at all the lead links and all the rep links who are uh, from all the different circles, I think we're, we're looking at 10 to 12, 13 people in that meeting. Um, so we go through these to these checklists who are relevant to us. Um, did you? Uh, are there any HR updates that this circle has to know about? Is your buffer time respected? Is the team planning uh, discussed and planned? But then on the left side, you see that not everyone has to answer them. Like the, four, the first four one, all circle members have to, uh, have to answer them. But you see all the other roles we have who correlate to the, uh, to the bigger circle, which are these roles. Um, they're all in Asana as well. So it, that makes it easy for us to know that, okay, at a certain point where we just want to know how the digital circle is doing, because to us, these are expertise circles. They're actually uh, our core of what we sell as a company. Sure. And the product circle, who we're asking the same questions and strategy. And of course, there are tensions being raised or there are tensions that we write down on post-its while we're going through them. Um, and then we also have some monthly checklists and some quarterly checklist items, also by specific roles. For example, uh, the one I just talked to you about, hey, the budgets for internal projects, are they not exceeded? We discuss that every first Friday of the quarter. Uh, by our finance role, for example, which um, is also our founder. If we go through that, people are stacking up their post-its and now we uh, go on to metrics. This might be something we have to, uh, have to blur later on, but we have this um, metric sheet that we build up for our different circles because as you know, metrics are quite important. Um, so we have this, uh, this metric sheet and uh, we have this for, as you see on the bottom, we have this for GCC. But we also have these for, um, for uh, the digital circle, for example, which are more elaborate than the ones we show on GCC. We have the same for, um, for example, for marketing, how many Facebook posts did we do, what's the engagement, what's the, and so on. So every circle has that for themselves and Replink yeah, reports on those at the GCC. And this is like the summary of all these kinds of, kinds of things. How's the, how's the revenue going? How's the, the well-being going? How are we going with new deals and so on? Um, we run through that, only the GCC one, and all the other circles on their tacticals use their own uh, tab. And which, which roles are uh, accountable for updating the metrics sheet? Uh, any, wow. any role that has a metric? Well, it's, uh, it's indeed um, a discussion we just had by accident this, uh, this Monday uh, at Governance, um, because there are starting to pop up some roles. If you look in the digital island, for example, there's this uh, 
this metrics guardian kind of role. The, the newbie circle also has this uh, metric master role. Um, so they're starting to pop up. So I asked the question to, uh, to Hans as well. And Hans said, yeah, like the lead link is accountable to define which metrics uh, need, to, uh, need to be made, like from constitution wise, that, that's the case. But the rep link is the one who has to communicate them. So there's still like this gap, okay, so who's filling them in and gathering them? So that's the reason why these roles are starting to pop up. So we're not really clear on that yet. Um, right. For now in the digital part, I'm doing it because I'm the team lead and I made the metrics, so I'm also filling them in. And our rappling is the one who's sharing them on GCC. Cool. So once, once the metrics have been uh, discussed, again, some, so probably some, uh, some post-its will, uh, will be written down by specific roles. And then we have projects. And the reason why they're not they are stacked uh, in this board is because we can add other custom post uh, fields to them or, or more relevant. And that's why we, uh, we put them in a different project. Um, if we go to the GC projects, for example, these are, again, um, they're sorted by, as you can see here, they're sorted by their sub-circles and their roles, which are the same as you see, as you saw here on the, on the right-hand side. So if you sort them, then you can go through them by role. So we know, for example, the digital subcircle has specific things that they have to uh, have to do that concern the GCC. The digital circle themselves, if you would go here in their uh, project board, you see that it has a lot more going on, but not everything is concerning the GCC and they're linked here. You can see that those three projects are the ones that we need to report to on GCC. All the other ones are just our own projects that are not related to GCC. And do those projects actually link through? So if you're in uh, GCC Tactical, do you see status updates for those projects in the GCC Tactical? Or do you have to like copy over the important stuff from the project no. in the sub circle? Well, they're, uh, they're linked. So um, indeed, if I, that's indeed a good, a good question. Like you can link tasks to multiple boards in Asana. And that's what we're doing here. Um, these, uh, these, these, topics or tasks or projects, whatever you want to call them, are also in the digital uh, project board. Um, so if I change something there throughout the week, then you'll also see the, the update coming in um, in the in GCC as well. And this is a technical Asana question. Is the projects column there, that's a custom field of like a project link type or something? Uh, here are all the fields. The projects is a, is a, is a standard one from, uh, from Asana, but the one we created is subcircle roles, for example. If I click on them, you can see that we have, we manually made these, and that's that. These are the ones that we have to update manually for now. Um, of course, if there's an accountability to it change, that it, that's not in Asana. It's mainly the name of the of the, of the role. Um, but um, like other fields that we have is project status, for example, is also something that we added because some projects could be waiting or future, as you know as well. Um, so I, okay, so the, the projects list is linked through tags? Those are custom tags? Well, it's, it, no, it's, it's actually core Asana feature that you can um, link multiple tasks to each other. If I click one, for example, and then you have all the custom fields here as well. But then you, then you also have projects. And uh, if you click, for example, if I want to add this to like another board, I can yeah, say, okay, um, this is also needs to be discussed in the marketing tactical. I can add it to that one as well. And now it will pop up in uh, which one did I just pick this one? This digital design principle shared in the Made Academy. If I now go to the marketing subcircle and I go to the tactical, you'll see that it's popped up here as well. So those and are boards. So you're linking the task to multiple boards. Tasks. Exactly. Okay, great. Let's start taking that out again. So um, if I move back to the to the projects board, then um, then you'll see that finance has things to do. And then this is also like a custom field. Uh, it's something we picked up from Springist, I have to be honest. It's, uh, it's a progress bar because every week if someone says, yeah, there's no update or yeah, I've updated it a bit, then the secretary also asks, hey, can we leave this at three out of five or do you think it's already four out of five? Because it gives that feeling of, of moving forward. Um, and it kind of works. It's something we have to do also manually, like we have to copy the, the block and then just add it like this. It's, um, but it works for us and uh, that's, that's the way we look at progress from our projects. Um, so in that way, we can also see in a glance, like, hey, Hans is already kind of done with his projects. He might need to define some new ones, or that's the way we look at it. Like the handyman I told you about, uh, install the made logo at the desk, for example, is something these guys do. Um, 
yeah so that that's that's how the projects roll and uh, you see this is a more elaborate view than you have when you're just in a tactical um and once these have been discussed again some posts will pop up and then we move again to, uh, to the gcc tactical um and one more question in there so if a project is done and clicked off mm -hmm. um it just doesn't get reported on does it does it disappear from the from the project list before you have a chance to give a final update on it? No, you can choose. Um, we, we, we did decide that projects um, that are, well, that are GCC linked in a way that we only tap, take them off while we're in the tactical. Um, but you can, if you click here on uh, completed tasks and you just uh, say, hey, I want to see all the completed tasks, then you can see them all together. Sorry, I just say all. And you see the, for every role, you see the ones you completed and the ones that's still open. So that's completely up to you how you want to, and then can those be can those be archived at some point so they don't appear on this list or is this list going to grow to infinity? It keeps on growing, but um, indeed, well, well, that's the reason why we use why we use incomplete tasks because I know that the ones that are, have been completed do not need to be reported on again because they have been uh, done. And if at a certain point things are not being picked up with the result of that project, then again it will be new tension and new projects, so it'll it'll keep it'll keep growing. Great. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so we just did projects. Exactly, and then we move to uh, to agenda, and then that's something we've learned is that computers and uh, and smartphones ha having them in a meeting is not really that effective. So we decided to uh, to get them away from uh, from our uh, yeah from our tables. So that's why everyone's writing down post its, and then he's reading uh, he's reading them out to the secretary, and the secretary is writing them down. Let's just say at an average, we have around 20, 25 topics every week that we have to address in, in an hour. So that, that's kind of, that's, that's a lot. Um, they're not really, you know, they're, they're just being put in based on where you're sitting. It's not about a priority. Um, but 15 minutes before end of time, the secretary make, makes this awareness of, hey, we still have 15 minutes left. Are there topics that we absolutely need to address? Or, um, and then we make like a final cut. We discuss our topics and then, um, and that's the cool thing for me, that's the magic. Let's just say that I made this topic like, um, um, we need more um, views on the metrics, for example, that would be a topic. Um, I discussed it. Then let's just say that, hey, uh, this is something that smooth operations need to pick up. And we just delete this task name and say, um, created and implemented um, better metrics, for example, that could be a project for the smooth operations circle. So what I do is say, probably it's still not going to pick it up. Um, and if I then go to the details of the task, what I do is uh, I still leave it in tactical for now, but I add smooth operations circle, also their projects. And what you'll see is um, immediately it'll pick up the, um, the custom fields from that specific uh, circle or team. Uh, and what I do is I say, hey, within the smooth ops slash roles, uh, or the roles from smooth up circle, I think this could be something that we need to look at from a process and project management role. So I select that one and then I say, um, let me just pick, uh, uh, sorry, let me just pick one of these statuses. This is to be, uh, to be started up. Again, to this one. Yep. Let's say, okay, the, the progress of this is still there, uh, but it's something we can pick up straight away. Then, uh, then that's already like a project that's already been put in into that specific group. So if the smooth ops would go to, uh, to their tactical uh, next week and they would go over projects, then you'll see that again, if we move to process and project management, I will already have a project here created and implemented better metrics, sign it, Thomas, what's the status? And there's no possibility that it can slip through the cracks. Wow, that's great. And that, that works because you have a custom field on smooth operations board? Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing, but I understand why it's, it's a bit uh, tricky to follow. Um, it's the same. It's another board, but it has also um, roles. But this is not the GCC roles, of course. This is the, the roles of the smooth ops. So we have like five or six of these fields with each containing those roles that we have defined in, in last from here. So one, one for each circle. Yeah. So if for, for example, Nubis, 
as things like Lead Hunter, Lead Converter, Upsell Spotter, for example. If we now go to uh, the newbie circle, Uh, and you would look into projects, then you will see these pop up, lead converter, lead hunter. And how do you get those broken out, uh, grouped by? Yeah, good question. By role um, here? Well, the thing is that that's also the cool part of custom fields. Like this is a GCC a custom field that we had, like I showed you before, like the finance handyman and so on. Uh, if I would not sort them, they would look like this. And you would you will be able to look at them by by look just looking at colors, which is not convenient. If you then go to sort, you will be able to uh, to sort them by that specific custom field. If I would say I want to sort them by project status, then I can see everything that's current, for example, or I can see everything that's waiting, or I can see everything that's future. But what we want to do is see what role is it is it doing because he has to report it, and that's what you get. And you can save that layout as a default for everyone. So everyone accessing that board immediately sees this. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So once we've discussed all of these topics, then they will probably be turned around from being tensions to actually actionables. Um, and they will be in this complete list. And um, it also happens that governance items get, get picked up through, throughout the, uh, throughout the discussion. So then we also add them here because yeah, you can do it in Glassroom as well. But of course for us, this is more of our tool to keep track of those things. So every governance meeting, we, uh, we just pick up this list and say, Hey, we have these four topics. Have you written them? Have you written them out? So we're now moving into governance and we're just starting uh, in Glassroom with the tensions we had in, uh, in, in uh, Asana. And do you just drag the, the item, the, the, the thing from the agenda group into the governance items group? It happens as well, sure. Yeah, if it, if it's an actual uh, tension that's being raised here, that's governance and not tactical, then we just we can easily just drag it to here. Cool. So yeah. So the one thing I want to just just make sure to mention here is so you're you create an agenda item in an agenda item list, and then you change it into a project, assign it, and then you just leave it there as an agenda item and move on to the next one. Exactly. But the thing is that if I would make another one now, let's say this is not a, this is just something. Hey, uh, or let's just say. Thomas sits together with Ferdinand to discuss um, business design events, for example, because that's a tension that was raised. Um, if I would, if I would have, this would be like the actual outcome, like an actual actionable. I would say again, yeah, Thomas, you have to do this. And then we move through the rest of the list items and the 25 tensions become 20 actionables, for example. If then everyone went through their checkout and said, hey, do you, how did you think the meeting went? Then what I, because I'm a secretary of the GCC, what I do is I select the ones mainly that would be everything because we mainly want to start with a new agenda next week. Then again, that's a cool thing about Asana. You see that one of these topics is in smooth operations because we put it in together just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, I would then say, hey, I want to take this out of tactical because next week I don't want it to be in there because it has been assigned to a person. It has been assigned to another board as a project. So we don't need it in tactical anymore. So then it pops out and it's been taken care of in other circles. Gotcha. And then when you come into your next tactical, is your agenda list always empty? Do you always start with a clean agenda? No. Um, I have to say that the things that we can pick up straight away, like we were only 22 people. So we, we tend to walk to each other's desks and uh, discuss things, which is still good, I think. But there are topics that come into minds during the week that we already put out there and, and so it, it's possible that you, there are already five or six topics by, by next week, for example. You'll, you'll see that if I, if I take most of the tacticals and you go to agenda, there will already, you see there are already people putting things in gotcha. Same for, for the marketing tactical. You see everything already has like one or two things that they feel that needs to be discussed. But that's, to me, that's a good sign. Like there are people who are actually thinking of these things that need, need to be discussed within tactical. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't discourage that. It's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it's sort of, it sort of goes against the idea of building the agenda on the fly. Um, but you yeah, can still, yeah. you can still prioritize on the fly. And that so, was the reason why I was defending it a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. It, yeah. It's really interesting. Now, like one really big ex uh, advantage of this and what I still want to show you is conversations because what I showed, what I told you in the beginning was we want to keep our emails and our other inboxes as, as clean as possible. So the reason why we've made these the same structure as we do our, our circles 
is that you can also do conversations like actual announcements. For example, if you would go to, um, if I want to address only the people who are in GCC Tactical, I can make a conversation and discuss things like, for example, I already posted as a, as a secretary, hey guys, this afternoon we'll have another governance meeting. Please take the time to prep any proposals and so on. And this will only go to these 11 people who are in that tactical, which is, which is to me, feels really nice. But for example, if there's like more, um, if there's a thing that addresses everyone at MATE, I go to the general MATE circle team and there are 22 people in there or 20 people in there. Um, and you also have conversations, um, but that will address 22 people. And as you see, as you see, Hans just showed his, uh, his handouts for the workshop because that addresses everyone. Um, there's uh, someone who wants to know, hey, we want to do some sales with a wish list. Can you guys fill this in? Um, there's a, we went on a weekend last week. Uh, can you guys share some pictures on that specific drive? You see what, what, what's going on there? Yeah, yeah. So people create new conversations and put them in the appropriate circle, either company-wide or circle-specific. Exactly, but the, the, the benefit of doing that, instead of sending out emails to everyone at habitmate.be, for example, is that, for example, 10 people would not even be interested about that message, but we're still cluttering their email. Right. By sending this to the right people, if I would make a conversation in the digital sub-circle, it would be these specific seven people who are in that circle that will get that notification. We need to do something about our font management. Can we, can we set up a meeting, blah, blah, blah? Uh, me as well showing some governance tips as a lead link, taking it back to, to, the, to my circle and putting it as, a, as an actual conversation in Sana. And it, it truly helps uh, to, uh, to discuss these kinds of things because you can also comment on them, which does not feel that, yeah, does not feel that rough, like, like sending an email back to 22 people who might not be interested in it. Yeah, and yeah. Right, right now, a lot of people do that in Slack and, and, they're, and they end up with all, with, Instead, they move all their conversation from email into Slack, and then you've got, you know, you spend all day like updating your Slack. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, but Slack as well, as you can see, it's, it's like a tool that we're, uh, we're also uh, actively using. Like we have tons of things we discuss here, but it's like really, yeah, it's, it's more of a fast thing to hear. Like we have random stuff, and there's, there's music channels and so on. It's, it's more of a culture thing than, than what we do at Asana. Gotcha. That's like, like, like mainly. That's how I integrated Holacracy in, in Asana or used Asana in our way to, uh, to be able to do Holacracy. We have tons of things like, of course, these, I mainly showed you now internal stuff, um, but uh, of course for us as well, it's, it's mainly about clients and that's where the projects from expertise circles come in as well. Like in the digital circle, we also have these roles with internal things like we need to do R&D for the digital circle, we need to do team growth. But what's more important is we also have projects for clients and this also the tactical gives us the opportunity every week go through these and just say hey um, how's Lobical going how's the mate website doing how's mango going and so on and that people have to give an update as well so me as a team lead I can make my attentions when a specific project is not going well and we do have some fields here as well like what what project is in in attention what's running what's what's on budget not really going well and that's what we go through every week as well. And you can see that these projects are also linked to, um, to different boards as well because they're interlinked. Like, uh, let's just give you an example, the lobby call one. If I click on it, you'll see the progress. You'll see there's no bottleneck. There's, the status is running, it's on track, so everything's smooth. And then it's linked to three projects. For example, there's a capacity overview. It's linked to the digital project board because we're now in that one. And there's also a main capacity overview because yeah, the, these give us an overview of who's working on what throughout the week. That's another thing within the sauna, but even those projects that are linked within, within that whole accuracy board or project board are also giving us an overview of who's working on what projects right now until what time. And what are the start and end dates on that, um, on that timeline? It's mainly when we, until what time we expect the project to work based on the project plan we discussed with the client. Is the, where, where does the start date get stored? It's, uh, yeah, it's also depending on when we started actually, yeah. But is it, is it a field? Uh, okay, so the... Yeah, I get it. Uh, well, it's, it's a date, is it like an actual date? Like you would say in a regular task, I have to get this done by the 25th of November. But what you can do, and I think it's only also in the, in the paying version, uh, you can also add a start date. So for gotcha. example, I would make a new quote, a new task, and uh, I want to add like a date to it. 
then you can say, okay, I want the 13th off, for example, but then it's already like too late. Um, but if I want to add a start date, you can also say, I want to start it on the 13th, but I want to last until the 19th of December. And then, then it gives you that range. You can see. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, to me, it's like, I, I, I get why people find it too flexible. Um, I'm, I'm going to shift to, uh, to my video view again, if that's cool for you. Sure. Um, stop, stop sharing. Let's see. Pause the share. Stop share. Sorry. All right. Uh, so yeah, I get why people find it too flexible because it, there's a lot of boards and you can interlink, interlink them and it might feel too much. But once you, and it's again the same with all accuracy, if you have an ambassador in, internally and then I coached myself and, and trained myself in Asana, then, and that some, someone who pulls the strings once in a while when, the, when it goes too rogue, then, uh, then, then it works. And, and as you can see, like if I, if I do like a basic training with people for Asana, I'm not touching the, the fact that you can link boards to each other because they don't know what, what, what the depth right. of that is. But within Holacracy, it's, it's like the major thing that keeps everything together. And um, the one disadvantage is that we have to manually update our roles. And that's something that uh, Springers doesn't have to do because they have one board stating all the roles and all the accountabilities within that. And then they just pull it out of the API and make this, they make this own circular web app. <coughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's a bit incredible, what, man. Th thank you for showing me. Um, yeah, it's it, that it's really nice to see it fleshed out and so complete. I, I didn't really see anything that that like triggered me from a from a holacracy coach perspective, saying, "Oh, that's you know really bad practice." The having the uh, having the agenda list in there ahead of time is a little weird, but um, I don't see that as a big problem. I think it's really cool. All right, nice. Yeah, I'm, I was just curious as well to to hear from you, like using uh, things like. Uh, like Trello or Asana, or like there are tons of tools out there. But Asana to me is like the one that, that connects it all together because you have the board view, you have the list view, you have the timelines and so on. And you're able to make it GTD in a way. Um, I'm not saying we're not struggling to get everyone onboarded on the, on the Asana train, let's say, but it's uh, the fact that Holacracy is also now part of this thing makes it for them somewhat of a, a must to be able to follow up because otherwise they're not able to follow. And, um, you're seeing in the first months already that's working out. So I'm glad from, from, because I'm, I'm feeling more confident in the sound than I am in electricity just yet. So uh, it's good to hear from your point of view that it makes sense. So, uh, um, I'm glad sh to, to share it. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. I saw you also did some little things like you had icons on each of the headings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a little more visual. Yeah. Visual. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Well, I definitely want to uh, hear about things as they develop, um, especially if you if you find out a way to do integration between Glassfrog and uh, Asana, that would be fascinating to talk about. Yeah, I've already looked into that. It, I think there's there's some possibility for it, but then you have to shift to the main version of Glassfrog as well. Um, so for now, I'm, I don't really have something inside that, um, that could solve it. I've already talked to the Springers guys uh, to see if there's they can make it like uh, something uh, that they can ship as a product that we can use as well or but I'm still, still looking into that but um, yeah definitely something I will be looking at in my smooth ops role as a, as a or tools role within the smooth ops circle uh, definitely something uh, I'll, be, I'll be looking at super cool anything else you want to talk about um, no yeah uh, I mainly wanted to share the, the Asana and Alacracy love so uh, I hope I did that in a way. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you definitely did. And I think this is actually going to be really helpful. I'm working with one client right now that um, they're trying to use Asana and it's almost more important to them that they get everyone using Asana than it is that they do Holacracy. Right. If at a certain point they need a certified pro, I'm all ears. So, uh, yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Well, uh, I guess we can wrap it up. <laughs> great. It great to meet you. Uh, likewise, uh, let me know what, what you can get out of it if, if this helps you as well. Um, I'm, I'm definitely want to put more in the community from from that kind of perspective as well because I know more from those kinds of things than I do from Holacracy. Um, and on the side, I'm, by having Hans on our side, I expect Holacracy to be to be going smooth for the for the, for the next few years. But um, it's also something we want to pick up in our in our marketing strategies as well. Like we want to talked about made doing whole accuracy and because we feel that with talking to people during recruiting 
it's something that triggers them the way of looking at structure and company structures and yeah. then with, with the sun is uh yeah it looks good to me uh yeah all right let, let me know also what you make of it in uh with, with the youtube and everything so uh definitely it would be cool to uh to look at that and sounds good yep i'll send it over when it when it's ready i think, I think this is gonna be really valuable okay cool sounds good thank you so much Okay, thank you. I'll t hopefully, I'll talk to you soon. All right, have a good morning. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.